Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Armin and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can add two-way communication to your Logitech Harmony Hub and fix one of the most annoying issues with the Harmony Hub. So in case you're not familiar with what a Logitech Harmony Hub is, uh, this is a universal remote control which can control your TVs, Blu-ray players, receivers, etc. And you can set up activities which automatically turn on and off the required devices uh, and this remote will automatically adjust the buttons uh, to control uh, the relevant device for the activity you're watching. Uh, so let me just show you in action what that means and let me show you the issue of two-way communication um, that we're going to try to solve today. So here I've created a setup uh, for what I imagine is typical for someone who's using the Harmony. Uh, I have a receiver, a Blu-ray player, uh, a PS4, a Nvidia Shield, and of course a TV. Uh, and all these three devices are connected to my receiver uh, and the receiver is connected to my TV. Um, and there's three activities set up on the Harmony Hub. There's Blu-ray player, um, Watch PS4, or Nvidia Shield. So if I press the button for Blu-ray player, it'll turn on my receiver, my Blu-ray player, and my TV, uh, adjust the inputs, um, and be ready to go in just a second. All right, so it's ready. Um, and of course, now the buttons on the remote control the Blu-ray player. Uh, now, if I press the bu uh, button on NVIDIA Shield, for example, um, it'll turn off my Blu-ray player, it'll turn on my NVIDIA Shield, and set the correct input on the receiver. So that's great if you're just using the Harmony Hub. Uh, the problem arises when there's external inputs. Um, so say if I go here and I turn on my PS4 from the remote. Well, the PS4 is going to turn on. And using HDMI uh, controls, it's going to adjust the input on the receiver. That's great. And then, of course, so everything's good to go. Uh, the problem is the Harmony didn't uh, recognize that the input's been changed to the PS4. Uh, so now this remote doesn't work, right? Uh, same thing if I, say, turn on my Blu-ray player. Uh, the input on the receiver is going to switch using HDMI controls, uh, and the, the Nvidia, uh, sorry, the Harmony is still stuck on the Nvidia Shield, so it's controlling the Nvidia Shield rather than the Blu-ray player, uh, and I find that really annoying. Uh, one last example: if I turn off the TV from the TV power off button, everything turns off using HDMI controls, but again. This is stuck on NVIDIA Shield, so when I come back in the future and I try to play the NVIDIA Shield, I can press the button, but it recognizes that NVIDIA Shield is already on, uh, and it won't send the appropriate commands. So all these problems are a result of the fact that Harmony can communicate with devices such as CVs and receivers, uh, but there's no way for the devices to communicate back. Uh, so there's no way for the Harmony to know if the input's been changed or if uh, a device has been turned on. Um, and the, what Harmony recommends you do about this is just turn off all HDMI controls uh, and exclusively use your uh, Harmony remote to um, you know, turn on an activity. Now, I don't think this is an acceptable solution, especially for those who are those in the family who are not as uh, tech savvy or you know, they just want to be able to turn off the TV from the TV off button or they just want to be able to play a Blu-ray by just putting in the DVD. Uh, so the way we can actually fix this is using Home Assistant. Uh, some automation in Home Assistant. So if you're not familiar, Home Assistant is a home automation software. And I made a video series on getting started with Home Assistant and the basics for Home Assistant. Um, so go check out that video series. But basically you can run Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, which is only about uh, you know, $50, $60. Uh, and we can actually set up automations to take care of this. And the way we're gonna do that is anytime uh, a device is manually turned on, it's going to change the input on my receiver. So what I'm going to do is in Home Assistant, I'm going to go and set up automations to say any time uh, the receiver input is changed to game, for example, uh, change the Harmony activity to play PS4. Or when the receiver input is changed to Blu-ray, um, start the activity for watch a movie. Right? So, if you're not familiar with Home Assistant, I want to guide you through this. Uh, let's go to the computer and set up these automations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go here to the Logitech Harmony Hub Home Assistant documentation. Uh, this guides us how to add the Harmony Hub into uh, Home Assistant. 
Uh, so if I go here and I go to my integrations page, as I showed, demonstrated in my video series, uh, I click add integration here. Uh, it actually may be auto discovered, but in this case it's not. Uh, and I type in Logitech Harmony Hub. Uh, we discovered, oh, perfect. Okay, so it's auto discovered, uh, submit. And this should add my Logitech Harmony Hub uh, to Home Assistant. Uh, while that's adding, let's go back to the documentation, uh, documentation page. There's two different services uh, that we will use for this um, in this video. Uh, so in uh, we have service remote dot turn off, uh, and this is uh, to turn off any activity that may be running, and then uh, turn on, uh, and you have to specify activity. Um, so you can start an activity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, turn off all the activities when the TV is turned off, or when Home Assistant detects that the TV has been turned off, and whenever the input has been changed, we're going to turn on the remote to the correct activity. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's go back here. See if uh, this has been done. Uh, area. This is um, right now. This is in my guest bedroom. Um, and let's go to Developer Tools. Uh, Harmony Hub. There we go. Remote to Harmony Hub. Uh, so currently the state is on, and the activity, uh, current activity is Shield. Uh, now, if I grab my phone here and I change the activity to, sorry, just let it load. Uh, let's say watch a movie. And then this should change to watch a movie. There we go, watch a movie. Uh, now, Harmony is pretty fast at updating with Home Assistant since I believe it is a local push type integration. Um, but yeah, there's that. You'll also need to add your receiver uh, and or your TV to Home Assistant. Um, so of course this step, I mean, this uh, method does require uh, internet uh, enabled receiver. So I've done that here. Uh, my receiver is called the family room receiver, I believe, receiver. Or X30, there we go, actually, then an X3400. Uh, so right now it's on, and the, one of the state attributes that we're concerned with is source. So right now it says it's on, on Blu-ray, now, if I change um, using the Harmony, I, I start to play PS4. Uh, the source should change to game. There we go, right? Now, the last thing I have added to my Home Assistant is my sh a TV, which is called Sharp TV. And as you can see, it's currently on. Uh, if I turn uh, everything off using the Harmony, so I turn off the activities, uh, then this should turn off. Uh, let's see. So it's powering off right now. It may take a little while just to power up. Um, There we go. So now it's been powered off, right? Uh, and the receiver X3400 is also powered off and the remote uh, Harmony Hub is also powered off, right? Uh, so let's uh, go and create some automations. So the first automation we're gonna create is to power off uh, or turn off the activity on the Harmony whenever the TV has been turned off, right? So we start with a new automation. Let's call it uh, sync Harmony uh, power off or power off. Uh, let's give it an alias. Right. Now, the, now the, the trigger for this device is basically my, my TV turning off, right? So it's a state type trigger. Um, so type state. And the entity for this trigger is my TV. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to type in sharp TV. And anytime you set up automations, it's just better to go to developer tools here and copy directly so you don't make any spelling mistakes. And the state should go from on to off for, for this uh, automation trigger. trigger. Uh, so we're going to say from off or on, sorry. Uh, to off, right? So whenever the TV goes from on to off, this automation will trigger. Uh, let's add the action. So action is um, a service, uh, 
service and the service we're going to go to the harmony hub uh, documentation is remote dot turn off a remote dot turn off and the entity for the service is uh, the remote so which is harmony let's find it here right here remote dot harmony hub Uh, so this will turn off the Harmony Hub. Uh, but I'm going to add a condition here, actually. And the condition is that the Harmony Hub is not already off. right? And of course, it's not a big deal. But if, if the Harmony is turned off using the Harmony button, it will turn off the TV. And we don't want this automation to trigger uh, when it doesn't have to. right? So the condition I'm going to say is uh, the Harmony cannot already be off. So this is the the condition. This is how we syntax it. So uh, it's a state type condition for the entity ID remote.harmonyhub. And the state has to be on, which means that the state cannot be off. So if, you know, let's read out this automation. If my TV goes from being on to off and the Harmony Hub is on, then we turn off the Harmony Hub. So this way, anytime the TV is turned off from any other sources besides the Harmony button, uh, it'll sync up Harmony uh, to let, let it know that the TV has been turned off, right? Now, if you have uh, other types of uh, activities in your Harmony, say watch, uh, for example, listen to music, uh, in which case your TV will be off, but your receiver may still be on. Uh, in that case, you may have to do a little bit more complicated automation where your trigger is either your TV turns off or your receiver turns off. Uh, and then your condition has to be that both your TV and your receiver are off then we uh you know then we uh trigger the automation right so depending on your setup it may be more or less complicated okay now the next automation i'm going to add here is uh to sync up the the shield activity so anytime the nvidia shield activity is on or whether that be through you know i, I cast something from my phone or uh, I, I manually turn on the nvidia shield what's going to happen is the the, the 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 receiver is going to uh, show the input of media player right so I, i've already typed out this automation so I, I don't waste more time um harmony sync shield is the alias and the id uh, the trigger is a state activity a state type trigger for media player den and avr uh, and it's an attribute so the source has to change to media player right okay now if i go back to my developer tools here and I type in x3400h. Uh, I currently have the activity set to the shield, and you can see that the state is on. Now the state attribute source is equal to media player, right? And and that's the source name for um, my this you know the input that the shield is connected to. Uh, now every time you're setting automation, you want to make sure that you actually check here in developer tools to see what the source is called, because in, in certain cases. Uh, it may not be called whatever the input is called, right? Uh, so, so th th that just um, makes things more complicated. Uh, now, if I change this to, uh, I, I just turned on the watch movie and the source has changed to Blu-ray player. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another automation. Uh, I'm going to, it's the same automation, but for Blu-ray player. Uh, so instead of sync shield, let's sync the Blu-ray player. Blu-ray. Uh, and the source this time needs to change to Blu-ray. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here. Great. Uh, and the condition is that it's not already on Blu-ray player. And the action is change it to watch a movie. That's the name of my activity. right? And I'm going to repeat the same thing for uh, the PS4. Uh, so these are the four automations we need. I'm going to save them. I'm going to restart Home Assistant. I'm going to turn on the automations. And let's go test it out to see if it worked. Now, before I, uh, I demonstrate if our automations have worked, uh, there's a few things we need to keep in mind. Firstly, if you remember from my Home Assistant uh, Basics video series, uh, the receiver and the TV, almost all receivers, it doesn't matter what you have, uh, what, what brand, um, what model, uh, all receivers or TVs are going to be local polling type services, which means there's going to be a delay in when the, the input is changed and when Home Assistant notices. And this delay is usually anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds, uh, which means that 
when the input is switched, there's going to be a 5 to 10 seconds delay before the automation triggers. In practice, this doesn't really, um, you know, it doesn't change much because say if I, uh, you know, turn on my Blu-ray player, I, I put in a movie, by the time I go and sit down, uh, the automation is triggered, right? Uh, the second thing to keep in mind is this, the reliability of this um, protocol will depend on how stable the connection is between your receiver or your TV uh, to Home Assistant. And Home Assistant itself is very stable. Uh, it doesn't have a problem. Usually the problem is going to arise with the receiver or the TV. Uh, in my personal uh, experience, um, if you use an Ethernet connection to connect your TV or your Blu-ray player, it won't be a problem. If you're doing it over Wi-Fi, then you know you may have more problems, or you, the connection may not be stable. Uh, your mileage may vary, so you know go try this out, see if it works. Uh, but now let's demonstrate if uh, if our automations are running and if they're performing as they should. So let's test this out. Uh, right now the Harmony is off, so there's no activity running. Now if I go and I turn on the Blu-ray player from my Blu-ray player, like I press the on button, uh, of course everything turns on using CEC, uh, HDMI controls, and Home Assistant has recognized that the Blu-ray player is, uh, has been turned on and is triggering the activity. Now without manually changing the activity on my Harmony, I can control my Blu-ray player. Right? Now let's try out the PS4. Now if I turn on the PS4 from the PS4 controller, this should again, it should switch activities here, or inputs here using HDMI controls, which it did. And Harmony, let's see if this worked. So I haven't uh, manually changed it, and there we go. It worked, perfect. Um, I can also change the input on my receiver, so if I go to Media Player from here, it should turn on my NVIDIA Shield using uh, HDMI controls, oops, media player, and there we go. So now Harmony is, uh, has been turned to media player, and as soon as my NVIDIA Shield is on the screen, it should be able to control it. There we go. Uh, and the last one is power off, so let me go power off my TV from the power off button. And as you can see, Harmony has been powered off. So now, next time I come in, even though I didn't power off from the remote, um, I can trigger other activities. Now this will work with probably more than 95% of Harmony setups out there. Uh, of course, depending on your receiver or your Blu-ray player, your devices, uh, your mileage may vary on how well this, uh, this system works. Um, one place where I do see it being a problem is if your device only has a single power on-off button or a power toggle button. So in my case, all my devices here have a dedicated power on and a dedicated power off command for the Harmony Hub. Uh, but if your device only has a single power on-off uh, command, then it will be a problem. This will, these automations won't work for you. Uh, in the description below in the link, uh, I'll also explain how you can get over that as well um, using some uh, more automations within Home Assistant. Now let me know in the comment section below if you found this video helpful and if you tried these automations and if it worked for you. Um, or let me know if it didn't work for you, what your setup is and why you think it didn't work for you and I can try to uh, come up with automations to help mitigate the problem. Uh, but if you did like this video, please hit the like button uh, and the subscribe button. Now the last thing I actually want to talk about is the, you know, the big elephant in the room uh, and th that's the fact that these harmonies are actually now discontinued as of the of, you know, making of this video. Uh, so they're no longer making these, although they are supporting them. Uh, so if, if you're interested in, in, in purchasing a Harmony, which you can't do now, uh, I'll actually be doing a future video on how you can use Home Assistant to sort of create a mock Harmony, or not a mock Harmony, but uh, a system that uh, has the same functionality as a Harmony with activities, um, you know, did, did different commands depending on the different uh, activity you have enabled. And of course, it'll have all these... Um, uh, you know, two-way communication and, and much, much more and you'll be able to control a lot more things. So if you're interested in a video like that, uh, please let me know in the comment section below and hit subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you.